a little bit of a different look than what I'm sure you're used to. Oh, hey, William, what's going on, man? Thanks for thanks for the live stream donation. Um, so Matt Milano has re-signed with the Bills. Um, obviously, I'm driving right now. Don't worry, the phone is secured. I've got a little vent clip that it goes over, so everything's totally cool. Uh, so Matt Milano re-signs uh, for, it's reported as four-year, $44 million, uh, but that's not actually how it's going to play out. Um, one of the interesting things about the Milano deal is that um, since he missed some time, um, they could put money in bonuses. And if they were bonuses that statistically he didn't hit last year, then um, those that money doesn't count against this year's cap. So th that's kind of nice. And that's probably what we're seeing a little bit um, is a little bit of that. Um, now, again, missing time is probably one of the reasons that Milano re-signed here in Buffalo. We've talked for a long time that Milano's sort of an odd scheme fit. Um, for some teams. It is probably going to hurt his market value. And as you start seeing these guys, you know, um, come off the board, you see like Levante David signed for the money that he signed. I think it became pretty clear that Matt Milano was not going to get the money that he probably thought he was going to get out on the open market. And that's understandable. Um, but even with that being said, let me just break down the salary for Milano. So he's getting about a little less than $2 million a year in a signing bonus counting against the salary cap. So that's item number one. Item number two is $5.3 million this year, $7.5 million the year after. This is base salary numbers. Uh, then 9.25 in 2023 and 9.55 in 2024. And then you just add 1.75 mil to each one of those numbers. Okay. So realistically, we take a look at Tremaine Edmonds' option. That's coming up in 2022. And we know that that option is going to be just south of $13 million. So what's really fascinating to me here is you get Milano on a really inexpensive deal for 21 and 22, right? And Milano's inexpensive at the time that Edmonds is really expensive, right? So you still got some time to figure out what you're going to do with Tremaine Edmonds. And if you decide that you're not going to be able to come to a contract agreement while, um, you know, while, you know, while you got Edmonds, if you're not going to be able to come to an agreement, now you've at least got Milano. It makes that transition a little easier. But I just want to stress, and I hope you guys forgive me for not reading the live chat as much as I usually do while I'm obviously in the car. Um, the one thing I think is really important to call out here is this does not mean that the Bills are drafting a running back in the first round. This does also not mean the Bills are going to pick up Tremaine Edmonds' option. He, this is a contract year for him if they don't pick up his option. They likely will, but it's $13 million, or just, just south of $13 million, so it's expensive. Um, but it, you know, it also doesn't mean that they're going to uh, avoid drafting a linebacker either. Like, these are all paths that they could take, and we just don't know where they're going to land. Um, Geek Squad says, well, Paul, you're late to the party. You signed a few hours ago. Yeah, I know, and I got kids and a life. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm on my way to go pick up food. I went through fast food for the kiddos because I simply uh, had no desire to cook. So that's why that's why I'm out. Um, in any case, this does put a little bit of life support for your defense, right? Yeah, you're not paying Milano all that much money. He's making just a little bit more than $7 million against the salary cap this year. It's a deal you could easily get out of. Remember, since his signing bonus is only about $1.75 million a year, that means that when you get to year three and year four, it's going to be peanuts to cut him. I mean, peanuts to cut him. Now, do you still need a running back? Well, I think you probably do. Um, there's there's no promise that you're going to be drafting a, a, a running back here. There's no promise you're going to draft a corner. There's no promise you're not going to draft a linebacker. Getting Milano allows you the opportunity to do, um, it allows you the opportunity to be patient with the position. Um, and if you don't like the player there, you don't have to snag him. Uh, Caleb Hopper says, no, we need a guard. I'm parked now in my driveway, guys, so we are good to go. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jason says, adding good linemen will be more rewarding rewarding than adding new running backs. Andy C. Hey, Paul, uh, I have a kid, a new puppy, a house. No need to explain. I get it. Yeah. Uh, and Daniel uh, obviously says this is good news today. Yeah, this is great news for the Bills because it's adding more continuity uh, back into your defense, which is something that you were kind of concerned about. You're doing it cheap. 
if you decide to walk away from Matt Milano even next year, it's affordable. And the most fascinating thing to me about this is that Milano doesn't get expensive till 2023. And then it's going to start costing a little bit over $11 million. Now, mind you, they're going to have incentives in his contract. They could be roster bonuses. They could be workout bonuses. They could be per game bonuses or Pro Bowl bonuses. We don't exactly know the structure. But because he really didn't play a ton this year compared to a full season. He didn't make the pro bowl. Um, a lot of those, a lot of those bonuses, he, he would likely not hit in a contract, right? So that means that that money's not going to count against next year's salary cap. Milano may get progressively more and more expensive, but for 2021, which I think is all you really care about right now, you've got a really inexpensive linebacker back at a very good asking price. Um, and he's, he's an incumbent, right? So there's a lot of positives here, but you can also get out of this deal really quick if you decide that you want to. And that's what I mean. This does not stop you from drafting a linebacker early. This does not stop you from even going out and being aggressive, signing a, another linebacker. This doesn't stop you from uh, picking up or declining Tremaine Edmonds' options. This puts all the options for you right back on the table because you can get out of the Milano deal so quick and so easy with so little money lost. Um, I think have a feeling the market wasn't really going to be where Milano wanted it. Um, of course, when you looked at it, you're saying, well, Matt Milano will be one of the top free agent linebackers out there. And then the guillotine starts falling on, you know, some of these, some of these players and quickly getting back to Buffalo makes a lot of sense. Why does it make sense? Well, you know, you're not going to lose value, right? The only way Milano loses value if he, if he continues to get hurt, he knows the system. If he's cut next year, He'll have just as much value next year as he does this year. So all these things are are a major factor, right, in Milano resigning, because this is a guarantee. His value is going to remain the same whether he's here, you know, just as long as he's here in Buffalo. Next offseason, if the Bills decide they want to move on because they drafted a linebacker, more power to them. But this is a brilliant move to be able to circle back. You know, Buffalo played this one right. They said we're going to allow Milano to take free agency. Um, you know, even though teams can't talk to players right now, players talk to players. Um, I think that's pretty obvious. Jordan Poirier was talking about uh, trying to trying to recruit uh, Xavier Rhodes and um, and Carlos Dunlap because he's been working out with them in Florida. Like players talk to players. Um, but Milano, getting Milano back at seven million dollars against the cap this year is brilliant. And again, you're going to lose some money to performance bonuses. This cap number is probably going to creep up, but you don't care about that right now. Right now, getting a $7 million Matt Milano back is great. Having you know, a $9 million Matt Milano next year when uh, you have a $13 million Tremaine Edmonds, uh, that's pretty good too. Uh, because again, you could decide that that's too expensive for you. Um, it I don't think you sign Milano to not pick up Tremaine Edmonds' option. I think you're. I think the Bills are ultimately going to pick up Edmonds' option, um, but it allows you the time to, and the ability to still take the best player in the draft, and that's what I think is most important here. You want to make sure that you're getting the best players in the door possible. Getting Milano back at this price tag is a no-brainer. Um, we had talked for a couple years now that Milano was likely a $10 million player, and for the Bills to get a discount on that year one, year two – Beautiful. You can't ask for much more than that. Great job by Bean to let this one simmer and sit. Um, you know, as I said, players talk to players. So obviously Milano and his agent got a feel for what was going on and decided that, you know, leaving Buffalo might not have been the best thing for him. Um, this is going to be a really volatile couple of years. Teams that sign guys to contracts, the free agency game is going to be really aggressive the next three years because you're going to have, you know, a smaller cap number next year. So teams are going to continue to try and cut guys. It's going to be a really crazy free agency this year. And then you're going to see an even crazier free agency once that salary cap number starts to creep back up again. So the next three to four years of free agency are going to be, are going to be nuts. And it's in the player's best interest to resign with this team because again, they're likely to retain the most value there. Um, especially a player of, of profile like Milano. So great job by Bean. Great job by the Buffalo Bills and one Bills drive. Smart move by Matt Milano to come back to Buffalo. Um, now, is it because he wants to win a Super Bowl? We could say that, right? Um, is it because the free agent market wasn't what he thought? Uh, that's not how it's being painted right now. Uh, does this mean the Bills are going to draft a running back now? No, it doesn't. Does 
the Bills are not going to draft a linebacker, doesn't mean that either. It uh, doesn't mean the Bills are going to re-sign Tremaine Edmonds for a longer deal. It doesn't mean any of that, right? This buys you the opportunity to do everything the right way from here till tomorrow, to the next day, to the next day. And you've got Milano on the books for four years at a point where you could walk away from him even next year if you want for minimal penalty. And um, that's just security you can't uh, – you can't put a number on it. We could talk about the salary cap, but getting that flexibility is invaluable. And good front offices get you that flexibility. Um, and the Bills are proving that uh, over and over again that they are a premier front office because getting Matt Milano back at $7 million is uh, is just phenomenal work. Phenomenal. Um, all right, guys, I got to get uh, food that I ran out to buy uh, into the house to feed the children I uh, love you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good one.